Tucker Carlson has broken his silence after being censored by Fox News, posting a two-minute video message on his Twitter account, which I'll play for you in just a moment in part, that quickly racked up more than triple the views of his ordinary show. And making it even better is he recorded it in the same studio that he used to broadcast his Fox News show from because he has a home studio That was built for him after him and his family had to flee their home in New York after Antifa doxxed them and came to the house and harassed them. So he moved to Florida, living undoubtedly in a nice gated community where he is perfectly safe. And so he still has the same studio. Meanwhile, Fox News' ratings during his uh, old time slot have fallen by almost half. (laughs) 47% to be exact. Of course, I am one of those 47%, and thankfully, my DVR automatically canceled the recording for that time slot, and I tuned in to Newsmax for the first time. I'd watched Newsmax a couple times, but never really paid much attention to it other than when they were airing a Trump rally, but I tuned in to the Eric Bowling show during the same time slot, and he was talking about the New World Order. He interviewed Carrie Lake and Tudor Dixon, who was running for governor of Michigan. And I thought it was a fantastic show. And last night, at just about the same time his show used to air on Fox News, Tucker posted this on Twitter. Good evening, it's Tucker Carlson. One of the first things you realize when you step outside the noise for a few days is how many genuinely nice people there are in this country. Kind and decent people, people who really care about what's true and a bunch of hilarious people also a lot of those it's got to be the majority of the population even now so that's heartening the other thing you notice when you take a little time off is how unbelievably stupid most of the debates you see on television are they're completely irrelevant they mean nothing in five years we won't even remember that we had them trust me as someone who's participated and yet at the same time and this is the amazing thing The undeniably big topics, the ones that will define our future, get virtually no discussion at all. War, civil liberties, emerging science, demographic change, corporate power, natural resources. When was the last time you heard a legitimate debate about any of those issues? It's been a long time. Debates like that are not permitted in American media. Both political parties and their donors have reached consensus on what benefits them and they actively collude to shut down any conversation about it. Suddenly, the United States looks very much like a one-party state. That's a depressing realization, but it's not permanent. Our current orthodoxies won't last. They're brain dead. Nobody actually believes them. Hardly anyone's life is improved by them. This moment is too inherently ridiculous to continue, and so it won't. The people in charge know this. That's why they're hysterical and aggressive. They're afraid. They've given up persuasion. They're resorting to force. But it won't work. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time, the liars who've been trying to silence them shrink and they become weaker. That's the iron law of the universe. True things prevail. Where can you still find Americans saying true things? There aren't many places left, but there are some, and that's enough. As long as you can hear the words, there is hope. See you soon. So that video, as of last night, got 9.6 million views. And it can be a little confusing because there's another number down here that says 29.1 million views. And I think what that is, is the actual impressions. And so the way that a lot of these social media platforms work is they technically only count a view. If somebody watches a video for a certain amount of time, maybe 30 seconds, So that's the discrepancy about those two different numbers, just in case you're wondering. So I'm sure that Tucker's lawyers are ironing out his exit, and there might be a certain period of time, like a do not compete clause, where he might not be able to do a show for six months, and I'm sure Fox News will probably try to trap him into the remainder of his, I think a year and a half left in his contract, but his lawyers will work something out, and at the very worst, he'll be able to just do a bunch of interviews on podcasts or just do commentary videos like this and not even call it a show. He's just posting a video on Twitter that's getting triple the views of any Fox News show. So he'll be back doing a podcast or a show or something in the interim or for the foreseeable future, whether it's on Spotify or Rumble or if he gets a gig over on Newsmax, The Blaze, or The Daily Wire. And whenever he comes back and wherever he goes, 
He's going to siphon off even more Fox News viewers, a massive number. That's just a joke. Don't get too excited. Fox News will definitely survive. Tucker didn't even have as many viewers as Bill O'Reilly, although he has more loyal of an audience and more of a cultural impact. But Bill O'Reilly had more viewers than Tucker Carlson before he got fired in 2017 because every single day since then, the media ecosystem continues to get more and more fractured with more podcasts, more shows, more platforms, more videos, more people spending their time watching content other places. So Fox News is still going to be a prominent fixture in the media ecosystem. But you should cancel your Fox Nation subscription to send them a message and to start watching something else. Anything else. Well, obviously, except for CNN. That's my job. I watch CNN so that you don't have to. It is a miserable job, and you owe me one for that. But I must admit, last night, I actually did enjoy it for the first time uh, maybe ever. Also noteworthy, Anderson, that without Carlson in the 8 p.m. hour over at Fox News, that the ratings over there are really collapsing. Last <laughs> night in the key advertiser supported or coveted 25 to 54 demo, they saw the worst ratings since uh, pre 9 11. <laughs> That's a really staggering <laughs> drop over the worst ratings in 20 years. And I got this email the other day from someone from Gary. I blocked out his last name just for his privacy, who said, I was wrong about you. Sorry, man. I'm a Christian conservative. I used to watch Fox News a lot. I unsubscribed to your channel last year because of what you were saying about Fox. But over the last few months, I've come to agree with you about them. Again, sorry, man. Hey, well, you know what? No problem, Gary. Welcome back. And now there are rumors that Fox News has kept an oppo file on him, an opposition research file, a dossier of dirt. Very common in politics and at Fox News, as I'll explain in a moment. Uh to try to start tarnishing his image even more. But I would be willing to bet Tucker is so squeaky clean that anything that they released, if it was even true, would just make him look even cooler. In this documentary called Divide and Conquer, the story of Roger Ailes, which came out in 2018. By the way, Roger Ailes was the first CEO of Fox News. He was chosen by Rupert Murdoch to build the platform. Glenn Beck made a startling revelation. I'm only going to play part of the clip. It's a minute and a half. I'm only going to play some of it. Otherwise, I'll get into some copyright issues with YouTube. But Glenn says that at one point, Roger Ailes called him into his office and put a file folder on his desk and insinuated that he had dirt on Glenn, that he was cheating on his wife, that Glenn vehemently denies and says that he was completely bluffing and that it was just a power tactic to use to try to keep Glenn Beck in line. At one point, he called me into his office and he said, you know, a lot of people doing their homework on you. I said, I know. And he said, look, there's a lot of stuff out there. And he reaches down and he pulls up a stack of file folders about this tall, literally. He sits right in front of him and he just puts his hand on there. He said, it's always a shame when a man has a wife as wonderful as yours. And he said, it's always a shame when a man does something to hurt that woman. And I said, it is. And that's why I'm happy to say nothing like that has happened. He was fishing for something. He was bluffing. I think there was nothing in those files. That was Roger's way of having control of people. And now it's come out that Abby Grossberg, the woman who worked as a producer on Tucker's show, who literally spent months secretly recording her colleagues, trying to dig up dirt on them so that she could uh, extort, in my opinion, the network out of money, claiming that it was a hostile work environment because she was triggered, offended by Christmas decorations. Check my previous video yesterday, by the way, if you missed it. But now it has come out that she was also recording conversations when she worked on another show before it was Tucker's when she was a producer on Maria Bartiromo's show. And she has audio of Ted Cruz talking about how he didn't want the 2020 election results certified. And so now the January 6th special counsel, different from the January 6th committee, this is set up by the special prosecutor, Jack Smith, is now investigating Ted Cruz because of the secret audio tapes 
that Abby Grossberg recorded. Also, numerous high-level officials within the Pentagon have expressed their joy that Tucker no longer has a platform on Fox News because, in part, he opposed the United States getting involved in the Russia-Ukraine war and other things that the military-industrial complex loves. Neocon Republicans are also thrilled. People probably like Mitt Romney. I haven't seen him make any statements, but you know that Mitt Romney is absolutely thrilled. And so is the lone conservative, which brags that they are America's largest conservative student newspaper. And they say that Carlson's departure is both good for the world of journalism and good for the conservative movement. Good riddance, they say. Well, we might have to start looking into who it is that created and funds this neocon publication because they sound exactly like the old bags at The View. Here's Whoopi Goldberg making the announcement to the audience when they first learned that Tucker got fired. Whoopi Goldberg, by the way, a pseudonym. She took the stage name Goldberg when she was just getting started in Hollywood because she once admitted that she believed this terrible conspiracy theory that a certain group of people are extremely ethnocentric and that it would open doors for her in a particular industry. <laughs> but, uh, well, not supposed to talk about that. Let's move on. Welcome back. Word has just come down that Fox News Media and Tucker Carlson have agreed to part ways. <laughs> Wave. <laughs> you know. And by the way, in case you didn't know, Fox News used to like me until they learned that I speak way too much truth. From 2013 through 2015, they had me on Fox and Friends a bunch of times and showed a bunch of my Man on the Street videos until, well, I'll tell you in a minute. I don't know if you happen to see any of oh. this, but Mark Dice, another comedian, he was out in California on the beach Dice. on the boardwalk, and he was asking people to sign a petition to repeal the Bill of Rights. Watch this. We're helping Obama repeal the Bill of Rights, all of them. Uh, really, the only one that's left is really the Third Amendment, but that's not really applicable unless we're in a time of war. So a signature to support repealing the Bill of Rights. And they all signed. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's so Does sad. Does that make you it? sad? No, it's reassuring. So you get the point. It wasn't just once. It was a bunch of times. They really liked me. They would even read some of my tweets to their viewers. Uh, Mark Dice, con uh, conservative guy on Twitter, also says a terrorist manual should concern the president, especially in the hands of a member of Congress. That was after Democrat Congressman Keith Ellison posted a selfie online showing that he had just purchased the Antifa handbook. But then Media Matters, the George Soros-funded smear machine, found out that I know too much about the Illuminati and put together a dossier about some of the things that I've said. And then Fox News never had me on the show again. And Carly Shimkus unfollowed me on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like it was a big secret. I did write the book Inside the Illuminati, Evidence, Objectives, and Methods of Operation, by the way, which you should order in paperback from Amazon.com if you haven't. And like Tucker, who's not perfect, did the best that he could within the system that he was in, was telling too much truth as well about way too many things. And so Fox News got rid of him too. But as you can see from this photo, just taken the other day of him and his wife of over 30 years, driving a golf cart in Florida after having dinner for the first time, he said, during a weekday in seven years since he started his Fox News show, uh, he certainly isn't letting that bring him down, and we all can't wait to see what he does next. And by the way, what do you think of my new Wanted for President shirt? <laughs> Order yours from my online store at markdice.com, or click the link in the description below, and check it out! <laughs>